Hey everyone, the name is Eric Doran. Burnout is a very difficult topic. It's occurred to me and I'm sure it has hit a lot of you. Perhaps you've been on the brink of burnout, perhaps you've been close to burnout, perhaps you went full on straight into burnout and you're now trying to get out of it. So what you're gonna notice first and foremost is the popular idea is we burn out because we work too hard. The popular idea is people who burn out are people who work too hard. But through this, some of these people might not work that hard at all. On paper, it might look like they are living quite easy lives. So how could they get a burnout? Why would they get a burnout? Another idea is, you know, it has to do with pushing yourself too much, you're doing too much, you're taking on too much, more than what you can handle. And so what happens is you hit a limit. There's a limit to how hard we can work or how much we can push ourselves. Now I agree with this, but I believe it's often much more complicated. I believe the reason we burn out is because we exhaust our resources. To me that means, imagine you have a limited amount of... Uh, energy. Now energy is everywhere around you. There's multiple sources of energy. Like there's charger slots everywhere around you. You can put it into multiple things. You can watch Netflix, you can go out with friends, you can sit down and have fun with somebody, you can have a deep conversation, you can go to a party. You know, it varies for person to person. One person's energy source is another person's energy yak. <laughs> Some things will drain you of energy and some things will give you energy. That's the basic notion I want you to recognize. You need to write down on paper what gives me energy and what takes energy from me. And you need to recognize that these things might go against popular ideas, you know. What other people might think is a fun and nice and recharging activity for you might be something stressful. So you have to listen to your own voice in this. What is to me energizing and what is to me stressful? Now let's follow through on that analogy. Imagine you have more, a finite amount of energy. Now what I see with everyone who hits burnout, the interesting thing I see about everyone who hits burnout is, it's not necessarily that they overuse their energy, but that they don't recharge their energy. What you see is, uh, it doesn't matter if you put yourself at 180 kilometers per hour at work, or if you do it at 90 kilometers per hour. So if you forget to recharge your energy, eventually you're gonna fizzle out. Eventually, if you're not connected to a source of energy, you're gonna fizzle out. So it doesn't matter. For some people, the race will be quick and for some it will be slow. But if you don't find a way to recharge your energy, at some point you're gonna run out of energy. Now, what I faced is, I grew up and I found myself quite early on taking a lot of responsibility at home. I think a lot of people who hate burnout might relate to this. We find ourselves in a compulsive caregiving role. We find ourselves responsible for everyone else's happiness. And we find ourselves to be very sensitive to disharmony. Yeah, most people who hate burnout tend to be very sensitive to disharmony and conflict. So what this indicates is we tend to react very strongly to conflict around us and tension around us. If somebody gets upset because they don't get food, then we cook for them. If somebody is angry and yells at somebody, uh, we try to make sure it doesn't happen again. We try to maintain harmony around us. Some people are naturally tuned to harmony and need harmony around themselves to function properly. To recharge energy, you need harmony. If you don't have harmony, if there's conflict around you, you can't recharge energy. So this is something important to recognize. What I find is a lot of people have this issue of, you know, putting on a corset. What that means is you put on a too tight robe to handle. You can't handle what you put on yourself, the role you put on yourself, the... Uh, things you expect to of yourself are too heavy, are too demanding and start to eventually choke you. It starts to feel like, oh, I can't breathe. It's too much. It's too heavy, you know, and this creeps up on you and everything that creeps up on you tends to be forgotten. You know, if somebody punches you to the face, then you notice it. Somebody punched me to the face. Why would they do that? But the problem with a lot of these complexes is they start to really slowly pinch themselves around us. So they slowly, slowly, we find that the corset becomes a lot tighter and tighter. 
So the analogy is this. A candle can't burn any longer if it's starved of air, if it cannot breathe, if it cannot function. The reason I introduce this analogy, the reason I say this is because I know a lot of people who work so much. You know, I, lo- I know a lot of people who overwork themselves. I know a lot of people who are running two jobs or three jobs and they have kids and then they have uh, different responsibilities. They have things to do every day. There's something to do. And I look at these people and I go, how can they do it? But not I. How are they able to do all these things? But not me. How are they able to be so busy? The simple answer is a lot of these people also have a lot of sources of energy around them. They have people that support them. They have backup from others, people that tell them repeatedly every day, you're such a great person. Wow, you're awesome. Keep going. You're great. They also have people that come up to them and talk to them as friends. Let's grab a beer. Let's go out. Let's have fun. Yeah, let's do it. They have a lot of time to go out with friends, to sit down, to take it easy. They go on vacations. They go out. They uh, have fun. They laugh. They can take things easy. They don't get too serious. But other people, they don't have this. Other people can be very serious. You know, they can walk through life very much focused on work work, responsibility, responsibility. I have to make sure nobody argues. I can't say anything that will make somebody upset. I can't do anything that will hurt anybody. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do that. Often what it is is we recognize there are multiple sources of energy around us and we find ourselves thinking about these sources. I want to do this or I want to say that or I want to do go here or I want to try this but I can't because. So what happens is when the corset feels tight, what I mean with having a too tight corset on is just that you start feeling like you can't do anything anymore. You can't say anything. You can't talk and have real conversations with people anymore. You can't share of your emotional struggles and your sadness and your pain with other people. You're afraid to be a burden to other people. You can't ask for help. You can't go out and just have fun with people anymore. Because I constantly have to work. I constantly have to do things. I constantly have to push myself. I can never give myself a break. You know, That's the line of reasoning that I was in when I went towards burnout. And that's exactly why I faced burnout. It was not that I necessarily didn't have friends. It was that I never asked for help from these friends. I never... Uh, did anything that would give me energy. Another part of it was recognizing I was introverted. A lot of people charge up energy by extroverted activities. That means they go out and they do things and then they get energy from it. And when they go out and they get home, they're overstimulated because they have so much energy and everything is so great and they're so on. Other people, like myself, find themselves getting energy from being alone. What that means is three hours by myself, listening to lo-fi, hip-hop, sitting down, watching beautiful pictures or animated shows or just relaxing or thinking or introspecting or contemplating. All those things charge me up emotionally and energetically. After that, When my girlfriend comes home, I'm so charged up. I just want to talk and I have ideas and I want to share and I want to this and I want to that. And I, yes, basically what I find is we charge up our energy from different situations and from different activities and from doing different things. So that's why I said in the early start of this video, write down a list, notice what it is that gives you energy, notice what it is that drains you of energy. What I also want you to recognize is the people that can drain you of energy and can starve you of energy. Sometimes I've argued that burnout doesn't come from overworking yourself, but from loneliness. What I meant with this is just that uh, sense of um, having Friend, the kind of friends that make you miss enemies, you know, the kind of friends that you're never good enough for, the friends that keep demanding more from you. You know, I got into a lot of traps, you know, for example, I am a 
nice person overall, okay? I do my douchey share of things, but I overall I want to be a nice person to others. I want to help others. What I would find is I would do a favor for somebody one time, and I would be happy with that. And yeah, I'm good. I like doing favors for people. And then the next day, would they would be like, why didn't you do it today? So... What to me was a favor, a nice thing, to them became like an obligation. And often what would happen is I would get guilt tripped. What they would tell me would be, I'm so tired and I'm so stressed. Why can't you do this for me? Like just one more time. Come on. And uh, then a lot of the time what I would find is people would guilt trip me into taking care of them and doing things for them. And they would get upset because they noticed if I, they got upset and started to make a deal, big deal out of it, then I would do something. I would always do something, you know. What people would have to do is they would all have to do is just get a little bit agitated or they would start telling me about, about the terrible day they had and how horrible everyone is and there's no good people in the world and everybody is horrible. And then uh, I would start trying to prove them wrong. No, I can, uh, I can help you with this. Okay, fine. It's just a, I can do it this time. Yeah, sure, sure. And then that time would become the next time and the next time, the next time, and the next time. But it would also be that they were very suspicious of me. What I would notice is people were very, very suspicious of me. If I would say something nice, it would be like, no, you don't mean that. You're lying. You're not, honest. That's not true. How can you say that? So a lot of the time people would be very suspicious of me. And that would be like, uh, or you should prove it to me. Basically what they would be asking me is prove it to me. I don't believe it. Prove it to me. And then that would also be an obligation. Suddenly I had to prove it to them. I had to put in more effort. I had to give them more compliments. I had to be more consistent. I would be have to push more. So what can happen is when you start offering people a hand, they start taking the whole arm. I noticed this because I worked in customer service and uh, I noticed that a big part of what we did was offering gifts. And uh, we would offer gifts as a nice thing, like, yeah, just to make people feel appreciated on their birthday or something. And what would happen is people would come, why didn't I give the gift today? It's my name day today. Why don't you give me a gift on my name day? Okay, in Sweden, people have name days. It's really stupid. You... Uh, your you have a specific date for your name, and then on that specific date, yeah, you people say congratulations on your name day, and then they would come on and say, why can't I get this gift instead of that gift? Why do you give me this cheap gift? I want this more expensive gift. And then they would come and keep on going with these things. You know, I want another other gift. Can I get two gifts? Why can't I get three gifts? I had two birthdays uh, last year as well, and then it wasn't possible. Why can't you give me two gifts now? Yes, people are unbelievable with this. So consistently you have to find yourself setting boundaries. Okay, one part of what I said with burnout was setting, finding energy sources in your environment and charging you up to connecting to these energy points, you know, doing these things and consistently every day, day by day, finding ways to take time to these things. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, as long as you can, as much as you need to charge up. Another part of it, I think, is setting boundaries. I can do this, but I can't do that. Yeah, I can give this, but I can't give that. Yeah, I'd love to help you today, but I'm not going to be able to tomorrow. Yeah, sure, I can do it this time, but I won't be able to do it tomorrow. You know, being able to offer things to people and being able to support people and being able to do things to people, but not one unconditionally and not all the time, and on your own level and at the level you feel comfortable. I also noticed this because I worked a lot in the nonprofit sector where unemployed work is the norm. So I would do one thing for a charity organization and then they would guilt trip me if I didn't do it the next day. And the, Or if I did it, uh, then people, I would go out to town and I would do something and then the people I were campaigning for uh, would come up to me and ask me why I didn't do something else or I didn't do more. So people are very good at... <laughs> pushing you know uh, and I don't know why people do this I have no idea why people do this uh, if it's just uh, yeah I seriously I have no idea why people do this but they do so you have to set boundaries sadly you do have to set boundaries and you know that's an empowering part it's also giving up that idea of the unconditional good you know a lot of people are attached to the idea of the unconditional good and the unconditional good is you give only when there's no self-benefit. 
you give and it should always hurt to give. You should always, giving should never feel nice. Giving should never feel good because then it's selfish, you know. There's an idea of the unconditional good, which is uh, we sacrifice ourselves for other people. We do good because it's a sacrifice. So when people do good and then there's benefit, people get very suspicious. And that's, oh, you say something nice and if there's a personal benefit in doing it, suddenly that's invalidated. But in reality, good should feel good, you know. So often we should not be afraid of doing good things when there's personal benefit from it. We should not be afraid of being good to loved ones. We should not be afraid of... Uh, making another person's day better while at the same time also making our own day better. We should not be afraid of listening to somebody else's feelings and helping them through something and then sharing with them our own issues and our own struggles and building a normal friendship where people can participate equally. You know, we need to work with that level of self-respect, which is uh, be nice to ourselves and be nice to others at the same time. And I believe if you can follow the steps in this video, consistently charge yourself up, consistently set boundaries, healthy boundaries for how much you can be expected to do and how much you want to give and how much you're comfortable giving, burnout won't happen. You can give a lot, you can work really hard at something, you can push yourself really much if you care about it really much. As long as you keep on charging your energy up and as long as you give yourself what is necessary to succeed. So I want to say thanks for watching this video and if you have any advice or any ideas on how to deal with burnout and how to avoid it and how to work your way through it, feel free to share it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this video and um, Best of luck in whatever you're going through and uh, whatever you're dealing with. And I know it's not as easy as I say it is. I know it is really hard to set boundaries and I know it's really hard to take time to yourself. But that's the medicine and the medicine is not e always easy to take. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.